You guys all saw that coming, right? Oh, yeah. I saw that coming. Wow. Um, feeling uh, just really surreal right now. Um, I said this to our players in the locker room that uh, this is a moment they'll never forget. It's a, it's a real, it's a one of those life-changing moments you have experience and probably five years now everybody that was here will say they were here and a lot of people that weren't will say they were here because this is historical. Um, I think this is one of the biggest moments in Old Dominion University history, um, not just sports but for the university to have something this significant happen that this is this positive for the university, something that our alumni can be can be proud of. Um, as I told our players, this to be uh, to beat uh, the number ten ranked team at home, to beat them by two touchdowns, uh, to get our first Power Five win, and first time we've ever beat a ranked opponent, and to have it be Virginia Tech, which is uh, historically one of the best football programs in America, uh, the program we have tremendous respect for. So, significant day for Old Dominion University and our program, and. Um, something certainly I'll I'll never forget. I'll gladly take questions. Bobby, why did you go to Blake so quickly? Mm -hmm. Was that the plan going in? And did you mm -hmm. have any pause about going to him with the mm -hmm. ball on your one yard? No, that was the the plan going in that he was going to play um, early in the game. We were going to play him early in this game because we felt like Dave that it. I mean, you know Bud Foster. It was going to be a lot of man. It was going to be a lot of blitz. We were going to need to play two quarterbacks today. And when Blake went in, he got hot early. I mean, right away. Yeah, significant throw early in the game. That was probably the biggest moment in the, in the game, the first. The 30-yard pass. Yeah. The first play. Yep, the first completion was a huge moment. And uh, our game plan all week, I can't overstate what Brian Scott our offensive coordinator and the staff did this week. He approached me last Sunday and said, if we're going to win this game, we have to throw the ball on nearly every down initially in the game. Because uh, what we did was we packed it in tight, and we knew they'd blitz it. And we put Fulgham outside on one side and Duhart on the other and said, we're going to challenge their younger corners. And um, I challenged Duhart and Fulgham in our Friday night team meeting. I told in front of everybody on the team what the plan was. And then we have two fifth-year seniors. And the basis of our game plan is on them. And the quarterback's going to have to throw them a catchable ball, but they're going to have to win one-on-ones. And um, I think it was – Eric, do we have a play-by-play? -play? Do we have any stats? Um, I just – I'm sorry. I just want to look at their numbers real quick. Yeah, nine for 188 and nine for 144. I, they stepped up to the challenge. Bob, you mentioned a significant day, significant week, I would think, after the, you guys kind of took a gut punch at Charlotte and then to, to be able to regroup the way you did. Uh, Thank you. Have you ever had a, a week in coaching where you had as big a mm -hmm. swing from something so, you know, mm -hmm. that low to this, to this uh, high? Yeah, the, this, was, um, this was clearly a very hard week to try to keep everybody together because what, what happened last week was the, the loss was – obviously significant, but what happened um, off the field with Hurricane Florence was um, was even more damaging to the the entire team, what we went through. They're still making up schoolwork right now. I mean, that, that's not done for us. And I don't want to misstate that, um, Ed, because of the people that have been harmed by it, but it certainly threw us off. And we had to rally this week like we never have before. There had to be, um, there were a lot of um, very pointed conversations. There were a lot of pats on the back. There was a lot of confidence building. And I just kept asking them to, um, number one, to just play, play a complete game because they hadn't done it yet. And I kept reminding them they, their record would be a lot better if we play a complete game. And then in terms of the upset, um, what needs to happen to have an upset, number one, you have to have belief. Number two, something significant has to happen early in the game. You have to have something happen that affects the crowd. And to Dave's point, that first 30-yarder affected everybody. And then to complete um, the touchdown drive. We didn't score initially on that drive, but the next drive we go six plays, 75 yards, and hit Duhart. Now it's a 7-7 seven -seven game. You know, then they score again, and then whoa, wait a minute, we score with four seconds to go before the half. Wait a minute, this is 14 to 14. 
Old Dominion and Virginia Tech are tied at halftime. And that locker room, I didn't have to say anything motivational in the locker room. What they were saying to me, and I can't, I can't give you the complete part of it. It was part of what we did, but uh, it's not for air. But it was about um, having another team become tense, having another team get nervous. So our whole plan was to just try to get in the fourth quarter with Virginia Tech having to think we're, we're in a ball game here because um, nobody expected that to be the case. Now, I do think the fact we went up tempo and we ran a significant number of plays, I felt like we started to, um, to wear them down. I think, yeah, total plays, we ran 84 plays. We were, we were going a lot of no huddle. We were going as fast as we could. Um, we went at those two corners. The two younger corners, we aggressively kept going after them. And uh, once we got into the second half and they got a little tired, then we started to spread it out and we started to run the ball. Um, I think we ran the ball for 50 yards in the first half, I'm not mistaken. It was, it was nothing to speak of. Um, if you'd have told me before the game you're going to rush for 100 and throw for 300, I would have taken it. But to see that we had, would we have 632 yards total offense? That doesn't happen unless we, we start to physically wear them down. Um, I felt like that happened in the fourth quarter. I felt like we started to, particularly at corner and safety, because um, we were making them play so much coverage. You know, we threw the ball uh, 50 times in the game. That's 50 times they had to play coverage. We were throwing a lot of quick stuff, and we were running a lot of eight-man protection, so we were frustrating their D-line. I mean, that's not supposed to happen. Flips. It's like it's the P5 that's supposed to wear down the satisfying. Yep. No, very much so. And I, I think you look at their offense, I, I expected they were going to be productive. That's one of the best offenses in the country. That system is so hard to defend, the RPO system. And I never felt like we um, had anything that we did that stop them, but I felt like we had a couple significant moments in the game. Geronda Hall's interception, the back-to-back -back sacks that kept us in it. Our defense kept in it, kept us in it in the second quarter. There were a couple times when they were about to get a two-touchdown lead, and we did something significant, um, and that gave our offensive kids a little more confidence too. If, if Blake had shown this ability that he was going to play like this, he would have been starting from the moment he walked on campus. But what Blake has done to his credit is he's just he's worked every day to get better. He's the consummate team player, Dave. When I mean, you walk in that locker room right now and you wouldn't be able to pick out who threw for 495 yards. You wouldn't even know it um, by the way he carries himself. But, but no, there wasn't. There wasn't a moment where we looked. Now, I felt like, Dave, in the FIU game when we played him a few series and he hit a couple throws. He hit the slant route to Duhart for 83 off a really good call by Coach Scott. And I thought, OK, you know, we've got somebody who we can bring in when we need to in relief. Well, tonight, the significant thing that happened, Dave, was that first throw. And what Blake does really well is he throws the man coverage ball. Okay, so now what I mean by that is you talk, you look outside, right, and you've got press man, and he has the ability to put the ball up in a catchable position. So Blake's always been able to do that. Now, is every team we play the rest of the year going to take Duhart and Fulgham? And I don't think so. So he's going to have to throw the other balls really well too. But this this game really catapults him in terms of the perception of our football team and the perception of people that care about old, old Dominion football. He's now, he's clearly the starting quarterback of this team. There was one play that stuck out to me. I don't know if you, you saw what happened to him on this. It's midway through the second quarter. He got a first down, like you're 44. Mm -hmm. And he drops back. And he gets planted. Mm -hmm. I mean, planted by two dudes. Yep. And he hangs in and throws the 25 yard seam route mm -hmm. to do hard. Yes. That was on the touchdown drive. That was the two minute no, drive. No, actually, right? didn't score on that drive. Oh, okay. That's where you missed the field goal. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. But yep. I just, 
Because he took, I mean, I know you had eight yeah. guys in protecting. But yeah. He took, he took yes, he did. Time. Yep, he did. He got hit. Um, if when we go back and look at the video, Dave, I'm going to say he got hit 20 to 25 times tonight. I just talked to him before I came in. He's sore right now. You know, his body is sore. Blake Lewis's body's not built for that. He's not the 6'5", 240-pound strapping guy, but he, you talk about tough. He hung in there. And Virginia Tech's got a defense that's relentless, and they hit him time and time again tonight. And he just hung in there and made play after play. Um, some of the guys talk about it. Players only meeting this week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those things work, sometimes yeah. they don't. Uh, I don't know. I guess you, obviously you weren't there. But mm -hmm. what, what was your sense of uh, mm -hmm. what that must have uh, accomplished? To, if, if, you know, you had to do that? Yeah, they asked me for it on Wednesday. It was actually Stevie Williams that asked me if we could have one. And I said to Stevie, talk to the captains first. So he got with O'Shane and he got with Isaiah. And what they wanted to talk about in that meeting was just playing with passion, just being relentless this weekend. It was that, that theme out of we have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And let's forget about what's happened the first three weeks. And um, they did it. So you'd say that team meeting was pretty significant. Anything else for Coach? Harry, come on, you got to ask one. Did you? Yeah. Not one for camera? <laughs> it's pretty, hey. Am I right? This is pretty significant, isn't it? Oh, let me ask you this. Ed? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Yes. Has it sunk in yet? No. No, this is still surreal. It's a, it's a, such a surreal feeling. I don't think it's sunk into anybody in that locker room either. I think they, they were dancing, they were cheering, they were doing all their stuff, but I don't think they understand the magnitude yet of what they just did. And it's probably going to take some time. Now, I want to give them all day tomorrow, still enjoy it, but we got to prepare for East Carolina, who's now obviously going to look at us a lot differently. Yeah. Nope, not yet, Harry. It's going to be a minute. <laughs> right. Last time Tech gave up 600 yards was in 2002 to Syracuse. They gave up 604 because we had 632. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just incredibly proud of the team and, you know, the way we came out. Um, you know, backs against the wall, odds against us, and uh, you know we came out swinging. When you back against the wall, all you can do is fight. So I mean, that's all we did today, and um, you know our hard work and effort they paid off. So. Shane, uh, just like what he said, uh, we had a players only meeting in the middle of the week. You know, so I told the guys believe from the bottom of my heart that we could do this, and that's what's going to happen. And guys came out here, they fought every single play, and it just show you how hard we were working the whole offseason, through winter workouts, through spring ball, summer workouts, and through fall camp. Those guys worked hard every single day. Anything that Coach walked through them, they responded, and we did it. You know what I'm saying? So I knew it was a matter of time before it, the world was able to see what, how good of a football team we are, and I'm glad it could have been tonight because we owe our fans this win, for sure. Um, talk about Virginia Tech coming in here for the first time. Their crowd's going crazy. Monarch Nation going crazy. Talk about ODU fans tonight. I mean, our fans are just as resilient as we are. I mean, uh, you know, they brought their, brought their flags up. Uh, Virginia Tech brought their flags out and the whole whole stands, you know, little bit with them rolling orange, but you know, our fans they stuck with us and uh, you know, when we needed them, they came through for us. For sure. Like it, it was electric the whole game. You know what I'm saying? Every time I look back, uh, the, uh, the whole sideline was like the whole whatever you call it, like where the fans <laughs> sit, they was it was on their feet. And like it just was a an incredible feeling looking back and just seeing all those people behind you. It just give you an extra push. When you get tired, you look back, you see that, you ain't tired no more. What was this week leading up to today's game like for you guys, the preparation that was put in? Uh, I mean, this fight was our best week of practice in the, this far. And um, you know, I credit that to the coaching staff and you know, to the captains and the seniors. I mean, we came out and we, like I said, we had our meeting and we told each other, you know, we got we to gotta hold each other accountable. And you got to play for the minute next to you because at the end of the day, all we have is us. And, you know, that's all we need. So. Josh, you talk about just the way Blake came in and just sort of got the ball to playmakers. It looked like he wasn't trying to do too much. He was just trying to get the ball. Blake, I mean, Blake came in. He basically just did his thing. I mean, uh, they, they, they let him play. You know, they didn't, they didn't you know, try and overcoach it. And, you know, he just took shots. You know, he had trust. He, he trusted us. And, you know, we, we tried to come through him whenever we could. Uh, 
What, what did you guys see on the edges there? It looked like you felt pretty good about the matchups, the corners. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. We came in, I mean, they had, they had some, a couple of young corners. And, um, I mean, they, they trusted us to make plays this week. And, you know, me and Travis, I mean, I, was, I, I am incredibly proud of Travis. Came out and had a, had a great game. And, um, you know, we, we basically sparked off. Either one of you guys described just the swing in eight days or whatever it is, nine days from, from Charlotte to this. I mean, it's, it's got to be the. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like we said earlier, we had that, that players only meeting. You know what I'm saying? I feel like everybody that was in that meeting, they responded to it in practice. But like Dewey said, we had our best week of practice week after that meeting. I feel like it just ignited something in everyone. We had a, like every day of practice was very competitive. We went hard every single day and we showed on the field. Man. How about this guy? Oh this God. guy right here, man. Both of y'all. Oh, man. This Both of y'all. He's crazy. <laughs> this is a foul point, right? Wait, did you have any weapon that you, you play, or was that, that kind of – I know you always have to be ready, but I wasn't sure if you thought – did they say you might, you might use you? Uh, you know, it's really each – you know, each week the plan is, you know, whatever happens, you know, be ready, like you said. Um, so that was kind of the plan tonight, same thing. Um, I don't know. We, you know, we never really know exactly when you know our time's going to come, or when we're going to switch off. But uh, yeah. How did you guys? I was asking Jonathan just about the matchups on the edges. Did you I feel pretty good about that coming in with their young corners and Travis? You're about take big uh, receivers like this and do some work there. Yeah, we felt really good. We, you know, we believe that those two guys are NFL guys for us, and so. Um, you know, the defense. They're, t you know, Tech played a great game defensively, and they, they were fighting hard. But these guys, these guys made awesome plays tonight. Blake, I don't know if you remember or not, there was a play midway through the second quarter. You're like on their 44-yard line, and number 11 and number 38 planted you, and yet you still got it off and completed a 25-yarder down the seam to, to Jonathan. Number one, do you remember the play? <laughs> and do, do you remember the hit you got? Uh, I, I, I got hit a few times tonight, but uh, <laughs> these guys, like, you know, these guys were making plays. So I, I don't remember it because they made so many plays. I, I don't know which one you're talking about. This kid probably made, like, 20 plays tonight. Like, <laughs> when you were in high school, you said all kinds of passing records. No one really wanted you at the Division one level. Partial offer from the Division II school, and yet you come to this, I mean, can you put that in perspective? Have you, has it really sunk in? Uh, I mean, the whole time it's, it's, it's been an uphill battle from, you know, since I was a little kid. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's been a wild journey. But, uh, you know, to be here right now with these guys and this, you know, this team, it's awesome. It's all worth it. What do you mean uphill battle? Well, you know, like you said, I didn't have, you know, I never really had a lot of offers, um, which I'm a shorter guy. I kind of get that, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just, you know, you're, we're always given an opportunity. You just got to, you know, be patient, wait for your opportunity. For me, um, it's always been God. Like, I've always had to trust in God. And uh, that's what that's what made me just keep keep going, keep getting through it. Um, even though, you know, whatever the odds, you know, I've, I've kind of always had bad odds. Uh, but no matter what, like that's that's been my source of faith right there, and uh, and you know he's so faithful, and I I get to just see it tonight, how faithful the Lord is. You have a little eyewear there, looks like. Yeah. Can you talk about that. Uh, one of the, one of the plays, yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's a face mask. Yeah, it was that one. Yeah. Huh? Um, it's not. <laughs> Anything else for these guys? Uh, one word of stuff that you're getting and what you're all feeling right now. Special. Super Cali Fragile. Listen, XPL Boy. Oh, man. That's one word. chance to win. You guys heard that, right? We had what? You had a 1.8% chance to win today. Heard about You guys knew where to win. Yeah. It's a chance. That's all you need is a chance. That's, That's yeah. all you need. Anything can happen. Yeah. All you need is one. Especially when you believe in yourself and go out there and do what you can do. Yes, that was the game plan. Um, Coach Scott told us early in the week that we're going to take a lot of shots. And that's what we did. That's what we did. Did you ever dream you'd throw 
shots of bad success. I mean, <laughs> at night when you, at night when you dream of this game, this is what you, this is what you, this is what you picture. You know, if we went out and did it. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> it will though, probably later tonight. But <laughs> it's a great feeling. What, what was what's been the glue that kind of has held you guys together? Because you're 0 three. I mean, you probably hear the noise. People are like, fire the coach. These players are good. You know, what, what what is it that keeps you guys? Bound together. It started started in the off season. We had one of the one of the hardest off seasons, and we just we all came together as a team. Unfortunately, the season didn't start as it as we planned it, but we finally got it together and got the dub. Coach, um, President Robert, his speech in the locker room. What did you guys? Think about? It's a shame he lost his father, but I'm glad we could go out there, maybe make him forget about it for a little bit, give him a little joy to a tough day for him. Anything else for Travis? You guys obviously believe in Blake, right? I mean, even though he's been, a lot of guys would have just put their heads down and said, okay, I'm never going to play here. But what is it about him that inspires? He has faith. He, he never gives up. He always believes in himself. He always believes that it's going to work out for him. And as you guys saw, it did.